Ah, the Davis Center. This building was quite an icon for the University of Waterloo for quite a few years, as it was completed in around 1988. Um, it was one of the first big buildings on campus for quite a few years. <clears throat> Since then, we've built quite a few more new ones, but there was quite a drought for a while. The style of the Davis Center would likely be described as high-tech architecture or structural expressionism. As you can see, you can see exposed ducts and structure, like the Pompidou Center showed here, a famous project by Piano. And also you can see another image of the same project showing the structure. Uh, this was also shown it was shiny metal, like in the Lloyds building, I, uh, Richard Rogers in London. So all these features make it look like a high-tech, shiny architecture. One of the features of the Davis Center is this exposed structure that you can see here. And this was quite a deliberate, deliberate architectural choice in that they were trying to show how the building worked. Um, it's not a very good idea technically, as now those uh, exterior red columns and beams have been painted three times as far as I remember in the last 30 years uh, and they will always need to be uh, maintained and looked after now because they're put outside in the weather. Also uh, they support the roof of this lecture hall and that means that they're putting lots of holes in that roof. With the main beam on the outside there needs to be connections through the roof leaving holes that have to be waterproofed. Another feature was to put the ductwork on the outside of the building. A really bad idea to take conditioned hot air in the winter and conditioned cold air in the summer and take it outside the building and run it up. But uh, they thought it was a good idea to demonstrate how the building worked, although in this case, how poorly it works. So the gold aluminum uh, cladding that's installed horizontally on the Davis Center, you can see is interspersed uh, between windows and between curtain walls. The curtain walls are the parts that span from floor to floor, uh, whereas the windows are the parts that are within a wall and are supported by the wall. That's the difference. So that is actually, that aluminum is supported by some steel bent steel uh, studs shaped in a C section and uh, unfortunately there's no insulation at the steel and this is called a thermal bridge and so there actually is a fair bit of heat that wherever there's a line of those screws uh, that is where there is a steel uh, supporting stud a steel framework and even though it's relatively thin that metal uh, that you can't see, I'll show you a picture here, um, that steel is highly conductive and so it does end up letting a lot of heat through, which for the 80s was considered normal and okay, uh, but today uh, we would not accept that as a, uh, as a solution. We would have to insulate that steel. And the aluminum was chosen because it is more durable. It takes longer for it to corrode, although it is actually starting to corrode. <laughs> Um, and it was also important that it could take on this anodizing finish, which is a metallic finish that has this gold color. So it's a, basically a chemically bound color that's also quite durable. Now you'll notice that the reflective windows are an important feature of this building. And that gold reflection is more about aesthetics, but it also is a nod towards some amount of performance as the uh, goldish color matches with the greenish tint of the curtain wall glass. One of the limitations of lightweight metal cladding for all of its benefits is that it can be rather easy to damage if you run into it. And uh, in a highly trafficked area like a university walkway, you can see that damage has occurred over time. And uh, sometimes this is uh, equipment from groundskeeping like snow plows, which would be an obvious risk around this type of building in design to think about. But also bicycles uh, and even just people kicking it 
uh, is a practical design consideration for the base of a building and hence one of the reasons you'd want to limit your use of uh, lightweight metal cladding. So uh, let me just uh, give you a sense that this is not very strong uh, and all I have to do is whack it to bend it. If I kicked it hard enough it would break but of course I'm not going to kick it. I'm a responsible citizen. The Davis Center has two different color windows is not purely a technical decision. It's very much an aesthetic one. However, these interesting windows in the curtain walls and in the punched windows of the Davis Center do have two features that matter. On the right hand side, we see the golden reflective coating and on the left, the tinted green. Both of those are technologies that can be used to control the amount of solar gain. It may surprise you to realize that even in cold days, controlling solar gain in highly glazed exterior parts of a building remains a problem. Sometimes you have to run air conditioning and you would in the Davis Center on a sunny day, even if it's cold, while at the same time having the heat. So the tinted green was used to absorb some of the solar energy, but staying somewhat more clear and transparent. And the reflective gold uh, coatings on the windows were used to reflect the solar heat gain and make it uh, more practical to heat and cool this building. The curtain wall was actually the first uh, major use of curtain wall at the University of Waterloo at the time of its completion. And this is what they would call a stick-built curtain wall, which means it is assembled from individual pieces in the field. This particular curtain wall model is called a Conier 1600 system. Conier is the manufacturer. Curtain walls are a perfect example where the enclosure is separated from the superstructure. In this building, the superstructure is a reinforced concrete beam and column system and like almost all curtain walls, an extruded aluminum tube is used by the curtain wall. Let's walk right up and take a closer look at this spot I've chosen because some repair work is underway and you can see they've removed the covers revealing some of what is underneath. This cover here is just a beauty cap, whereas this aluminum plate held in place by these closely spaced screws holds the glass into the framing so that it will be securely held in position. This photo of a cut section shows the pressure plate on the left and the structural tube on the right with clearly visible rubber gaskets holding the glass and acting as insulation between inside and out. I also want to point out these holes drilled in the pressure plate here on the right and here on the left. And those holes are drain or weep openings that allow water that leaks in past the rubber gasket to exit before it can do any harm. Before we leave the Davis Center and its curtain wall, I just want to remind people that these are actually relatively complex systems with lots to know in terms of understanding. But at least you should have an idea of being able to identify them and have a basic idea of how they work.